Hello friends, this video on equilibrium part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 4. As I told that the chemical equilibrium is dynamic. What is the proof for this? There has to be proof, right? I'm just telling you it's dynamic, but if you uh, look at the, let's suppose my glass, if I put some salt in this, if I mix it, uh, it goes off. You keep adding more, it doesn't dissolve. Maybe that the extra salt which you are adding is not even dissolving only. I told that uh, the crystal, the sugar or the salt crystals, uh, the new ones go into the solution and the, uh, some crystals come from solution and becomes crystal also. It, it happens as I told. But there is no proof. I didn't give you proof of that. Here's the proof of this. So what we have done is, so let's, let's take two, two reactions here. So I have N2 plus 3H2 gives NH3, this is also equilibrium reaction, uh, uh, reversible reaction, and N2 plus D2, I'll take, and here I'll get 2 N D3. D2 is deuterium. So these, in this case, this is my case 1, this is my case 2. So my case 1 is this beaker, case 2 is this beaker. So here I have NH3 in equilibrium, here I have N D3 in equilibrium. And both are in equilibrium now. Both have reached, I have kept this uh, N2 and S2 in one beaker. It reached equilibrium, it has now N2, H2, N. So this guy, beaker 1 will have N2, H2, N, and S2. Three things. Beaker 2 will have N2, D2, N, N, D3. Three things. Now what I do is, I join this. I join this. So what happens is, Gas comes from this, mixes this, the gas mixes, right? And then again, equilibrium is reached. Now, since they are already in equilibrium, even if I mix it, what will happen? It will have N2, H2, NH3 from first, and N2, H2, ND3 from second, right? So, overall, it will have four different, it should have four different, because uh, the duplicates are removing it four different chemical compounds, right? Because it had N2H2, NS3, it had N2D2, NS3, so D2, five, four different. N2H2, NS3, ND3, and D2, right? So we'll have five, we should have five different chemical compounds in this. Because they were already in equilibrium, and now also they, they are in equilibrium, they should not react. If, assuming that it is not dynamic, but using spectrometer, Scientists have seen that after some time, these uh, the this the chemical compounds which these two beaker uh, mixed beaker had was NS3 expected, NH2D was there, NHD2 was there, ND3 was there, H2 was there, N2 was there. So H2, N2, these things we expected actually, right? These things we expected. This was expected, but these two we didn't expect. How it came? How NH2D came? How NHD2 came? Why? Because it is dynamic. Even if it reached equilibrium, it was dynamic. It keeps reacting. Right? Because, see, even if this guys explain, so NH3 reacted with D2, and or ND2 reacted with H, H2, all these reactions kept happening. And that's why we got these two also. So we're using mass spectrometer, uh, chemistry found this. And that it proves that the equilibrium is dynamic, even if the equilibrium has reached, the reaction happens. Forward reaction, back reaction. Both happen. So in this case, even if the equilibrium has reached, all these reactions are happening. Now since they are in mixture, these reactions also happen. NS3 mixed with uh, D2, and D3 mixed with S2, all these reactions also happen. So we will discuss some characteristics of the chemical equilibrium. We have done for the physical equilibrium. Let's do for the chemical equilibrium. So observable proper, observable property of the system, the pressure, color, concentration, they become constant at the equilibrium and they don't change after that. These are the observable property. The property which we observe, those properties becomes constant. Right? It is dynamic in nature. The third property is equilibrium can be approached from either side. For example, 
you have N2 and H2 gives NS3. As I told that uh, you have, uh, let's suppose, you start with 10 moles of this, 10 moles of this and 0 moles of this, you will reach equilibrium. Or if you start with 20 moles of this, let's suppose, and 0 moles of this, then also you will reach equilibrium. So it can be approached from either side, either from this side or from this side. Please note, it's a critical thing. Equilibrium can be approached from either of the side. It happens only in the closed system. Physical equilibrium also happens in the closed system. This also occurs in the closed system only. And catalysts, they don't alter the equilibrium. We will we'll discuss more about this. It increases the rate of reaction, but it won't alter the equilibrium because it will increase the rate of reaction both for forward and reverse. It is like this, yeah. I mean, if, if the rate of formation of this guy is, let's suppose, uh, 10 moles per minute without catalyst, right? 10 moles per minute. And this also, let's suppose, is 10 moles per minute. So, the moment you add catalyst, both may become 50 moles per minute. So, both the reaction will be fast, right? Both the reaction will be fast, but it won't be. Uh, altering the equilibrium. So we'll discuss this when we discuss the Haber process here. We actually use catalyst to make it fast, but the equilibrium as such is not impact. So we discussed a lot about equilibrium, but we have certain doubts. First doubt is what is the relationship between the concentration of reactant product in the equilibrium? For example, I have A plus B to C and D. If I start with 10, 10, so in equilibrium, will it be 2288 8, or it will be 3370? 3, I don't know. What is the relationship? What determines whether it will be 37, 28, or 2.5 and 7.5? You don't know. What are the factors which determine this? Also, can we determine the equilibrium from the initial concentration? I am told that if I have A plus B, give C plus D is my will make sure if I start with 5, 5 moles of this and 2, 2 moles of this or if I start with 10, 10 of this, 0, 0 of this or I start with 8, 8 of this, 0, 0 of this. So in all these cases, with the initial concentration, can we determine what will be the equilibrium concentration? And how can we alter this? How can we Tweak, as I told, right, the reason why we are studying equilibrium is you want to understand the property of equilibrium and then tame it to make sure if you want C plus D output, I, I can get the maximum of this. I can maximize this, right? So that's what the whole purpose of understanding the equilibrium chapter. So the question is, how can we tame it? So we'll, we'll discuss. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.